I've spent 12 months using the Sony A7 Mark IV and today I'm going to give you my long term review, my thoughts and experiences of using this camera as my main camera for the last 12 months. There's certainly been a few surprises and I'll let you know at the end of the video whether it's something I would recommend for you. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name's Lucas, I'm a videographer and photographer based here in the UK, and I shoot primarily adventure and travel photography with a bit of automotive stuff mixed in there as well. I spend a lot of my time making YouTube videos and travel films to give you a little context about what I've used this camera for. I've also used this camera for a number of client gigs over the course of this year, as that helps pay those bills. So when I picked up this camera in December of 2021, I was looking for a camera that was going to be able to produce really nice stills that could be used for client work, being blown up, as well as social media content, as well as a camera that could produce great video, 4K was kind of an essential for me, as well as 10-bit colour because I wanted to be able to experiment and grow my colour grading abilities. Okay, so first things first, I want to go through a couple of things that are maybe concerns for some people about the A7 Mark IV that they've been brought up by several different reviewers and people um, and I just wanted to kind of clarify and uh, share my experience with them. The first of those being that the camera may overheat. It's not something that I've experienced at all this whole year. Some people were worried that in 4K60 that the camera was overheating, getting too hot and shutting off. Some people have experienced that. Uh, I personally have not, not once all year, and I've used this camera extremely heavily. I've shot a lot of 4K60, uh, and given I do typically shoot it with the screen open, I've heard that some of the issues actually come when the screen is closed, so that's just something to keep out for, but it's not really a major sacrifice to make. Just open the screen and you won't have any issues. The second one is the 4K60 crop. I think it's something that is a factor on this camera. If you shoot a lot of 4K60 and you need really wide 4K60, then you may need to invest in some extra wide glass uh, to kind of get around that because you do get a 1.5 times crop. But that was something I knew going in. That's not like it was a surprise. Uh, that's just a feature of this camera. Actually, I found it to be beneficial in some scenarios where I'm able to just punch in that little bit closer. I don't typically shoot a lot of wide or super wide 4K60. Uh, it's normally more punched in stuff, slow-mo details, etc. Um, so I've not had any issues with that crop. The final one is the rolling shutter. Again, this is something that was very quickly realized when this camera came out, that it does have fairly poor rolling shutter performance. But again, it's not been something that's bugged me on this camera. Uh, it's not been something that I've, every time I've shot, I've just gone, ah, oh, damn, I wish it didn't have this issue. I haven't really noticed it as a major, major problem. Um, I'm still loving the footage that comes out of this and we'll get onto that in just a second. The ergonomics of the camera have been greatly improved over the a7 mark iii the grip is much more comfortable to hold i still wouldn't say it's up to canon levels of ergonomics but in terms of a sony camera it's probably the best they've ever done uh, and the ergonomics of the actual buttons and where they're placed has been just really really improved and that switch between photo video and snq is absolutely essential overall the ergonomics of this camera are fantastic including the flip out screen which is great the hardware of this camera is up to Sony levels that we have come to expect over the last few years. Over the course of the last 12 months, I shot in a range of conditions from snow on mountains. I actually took this camera up with me skiing one day. Uh, I've shot at racetracks around really dusty environments. I've shot in really humid environments in uh, Indonesia. So I've really kind of put this camera through its paces. And in terms of weather sealing and performance, I haven't really had to clean the sensor pretty much, I think, at all this year. So that's great. 
big thank you to that shutter coming down, that really helped. And it has already stood the test of time over the course of this year when I've put it through some pretty harsh environments and I haven't had any issues. So that's something you can be 100% confident in. But I think that's something we've come to expect from Sony. So yeah, no issues there at all. <laughs> In terms of photos, I am predominantly a video shooter now, but I still love taking photos. I would say my split is now 30 photos, 70% uh, video, but I enjoy photos as a hobby. It really means a lot to me and I do it more casually rather than for client work now, but I have had a few gigs this year as well. But in terms of a photography camera, it is absolutely exceptional. Autofocus is absolutely spot on. It picks up faces incredibly well, incredibly quickly and accurately. No complaints over on the photography side. One of the things that's made the Sony a7 Mark IV experience so good is the autofocus system. Now you've probably heard people rave about this, including myself over the course of the last 12 months, but this autofocus system is absolutely best on the market. It is really sticky, it identifies subjects incredibly well, and it just holds onto them. And when you've got an autofocus system that good that you can rely on constantly, it makes using this camera an absolute joy. I think the new 33 megapixel sensor is a brilliant balance between a sensor that's not too big, that your file sizes are ridiculously big, and storing photos and managing photos becomes a real hassle. Having those extra megapixels that allows you to crop in and get really nice detailed photos and have a lot more flexibility when it comes to post-production, while also not compromising the ability in low light scenarios where this camera does perform really, really well. I don't shoot a lot of astrophotography, but I have shot quite a lot of night photography, uh, whether it's in a city or outdoors, and it's just performed really, really well. The ISO performance on this camera is incredible as Sony is kind of known for these days. Uh, so this camera is no exception and I've really enjoyed using this camera in night scenarios. When it comes to day-to-day -day use in photography for this camera it is an absolute joy to use. The ability to customize your buttons and the layout really helps you tailor your experience. Plus having that flip out screen when you're shooting vertical, which a lot of us are these days. Shooting in a portrait orientation has never been easier, so it really, really helps in that regard. Finally, on the photo side, when it comes to editing the files from the Sony a7 Mark IV, they are so rich in detail and there's so much data there that you can play around with in post. The images have a great deal of dynamic range and the raw files just have so much data within them. So pulling and pushing your colors is fantastically easy without losing quality when you're editing your photos, which is great for someone who might want to experiment with their style while using this camera. The video performance on the Sony a7 Mark IV is absolutely exceptional. The 4K image is incredibly detailed, beautiful, and just produces fantastic colors. This camera shoots a beautiful 4K image. It's downsampled from 7K, meaning that you're getting all the best bits from that 7K sensor, uh, and it's downsampling it to a beautiful 4K image that holds so much detail. Uh, it doesn't feel over sharpened in any way for me. I feel like if you do want to soften it up, putting a mist filter on, which I have done quite a lot this year to get that more kind of cinematic look, if you want to call it that, uh, is something that you can definitely do. I found the footage coming out of the A7 Mark IV incredibly easy to grade and achieve colors that I want to in my films. And it's been a great experience as someone who's trying to learn color grading a little bit more and get more creative with the grades that I produce on my films. It has been incredibly useful. The 10-bit color has so much flexibility in post, which has made post-processing a great experience. So I've been really, really pleased with the images I've been able to get out of it. And I wouldn't be able to get those images without the fantastic autofocus system that this camera has. Honestly, this autofocus system is a godsend. It works so reliably and so well. There's only been a handful of scenarios where it hasn't worked for me and honestly it has been incredibly reliable. Pairing the fantastic abilities of this camera with the amazing range of lenses that are now to offer for Sony, honestly you have so much to choose from to get a look that you really love. I know that many other people have given this camera plenty of praise but I'm gonna add to that because it is absolutely fantastic. It's been the perfect camera and one that I will continue to use into 2023. So there we go, the question remains, was it the best option for me? 
Was it the right camera for me to use over the past 12 months? Well, personally, as you can probably imagine, I'm gonna say yes. This was the right camera, the right time, uh, and it really helped me produce some of my best work this year and really develop and grow in my photography and videography. And it's really just been a joy to use. Now, is it the right camera for you? Well, you're gonna have to make part of that decision yourself as I don't know exactly what your needs are. However, if you're someone that shoots both photo and video and you need a camera that can produce exceptionally in both of those categories, then this camera is definitely for you. All right, that's it from me. Make sure you go down and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more videos just like this one. And if you enjoyed this video, leave it a like. That really helps the old algorithm getting this video out to a few more people. So thank you so much for all your support over on the channel and uh, I can't wait to see you next week. All right, see you later.